In today's video, we're gonna talk about the 10 cool things that I put into my bag this year, just in case you might wanna put them into your bag, or maybe under your tree, or in your stocking, or in your loved one's stocking, or however you celebrate this holiday season. Maybe you just want a last minute tax deduction. Anyway, let's get started. The first thing on my list is this really cool camera strap, which I picked up from Amazon for only about $20. I've always loved brown leather, and I just love the retro sort of appearance that it has, and you can get it at a really affordable price. Next up on the list are these gobos, which I got from my nice photo SN29 optical snoot. And the way that they work is they just give you a metal stencil that you're able to shine light through, and then that light is focused onto your subject or background. I found these variety packs by Godox that are pretty close to the gobo size that the nice photo takes. You just have to cut them down with a pair of shears or a Dremel tool, and it really makes for a lot of fun creativity. If you would like this exact gobo set that's in my hands right here, just click on the link below for my mailing list and you can sign up to win it automatically. Also, please note that all the things that I'm gonna talk about today will be listed in the description in case you wanna check them out. So earlier this year when I upgraded cameras, that camera had a USB-C port for tethering. And so I wanted to get a Tether Tools right angle USB-C camera cable to USB-C computer cable. And unfortunately at the time, Tether Tools didn't make that cable and I'm not really sure if they make it today. It was sort of a blessing because what I ended up having to get was this 20 inch USB-C camera cable um, that then plugs into a USB 3.0 adapter. And then that plugs in to a long 15 foot cable with a USB-C port on the end and then that plugs into my computer. One of the great things about this setup is because of this 20 inch cable, I can put this into the camera and then through the tether block and I can just leave it there in my bag the whole time and it doesn't really get in the way. I just sort of fold it up and then on top of that, when I'm working and I've got it plugged into the longer cable, I don't have to worry about stepping on my cable and ripping the camera out of my hands or tripping on the cable and ripping the camera off the camera cart or the tethering cart because basically this just acts as like a little escape hatch. So let's move on to the next thing and that is the Ellen Chrome bridge. And the Ellen Chrome bridge just lets you bridge the gap between Ellen Chrome Skyport system and your lights and your mobile device or computer, essentially using Bluetooth technology. With the Ellen Chrome Bridge, you'll be able to talk to up to 20 different strobes and you'll be able to assign them custom names in most cases if they are compatible with the system. And you'll also be able to adjust the power of each light, turn on the modeling lights on or off, change the power of all of your lights, change the groups of lights from one group to the other. It will really speed up your workflow overall, especially it'll be a lot quicker than fumbling around with the transmitter or the Sekonic L478 light meter, which of course I love. You know, the very first day that I was using the bridge, I was wrangling seven lights and bouncing back and forth between two setups. The bridge has a feature that lets you save all of the settings for a particular setup and then load them later. So the way that that worked on set is I had everything set up and dialed in for setup A. And once I was done, I saved those settings to my computer and then moved everything around for setup B. And once I was dialed in on that, I saved those settings. And then when I was ready to go back to A, I just moved all the lights back over to where they were and then loaded the settings for setup A and I was pretty close to where I needed to be. The next thing on my list isn't physical, it's actually sort of virtual. Well, it is software, and that is Capture One. Earlier this year, I changed cameras, and Lightroom didn't fully support the RAW files from that camera, and that forced me to try out Capture One, which really was a great thing, because Capture One has these style packs that emulate film looks, and that has really revolutionized my work overall. Now these style packs do cost extra, but they're worth every penny of it. You can essentially apply a Kodak or a Fuji look to your images and give them sort of a retro feel. And because you can apply them to a new layer, you can then change the opacity of that layer. And oftentimes I'm applying maybe 25 to 75% of the style onto my images. 
So how could I forget this next item, which is the Billingham 445. I wanted one of their bags for a really long time and I finally splurged this year and bought one. And in this bag, I can fit two cameras with grips and anywhere between four and five lenses, depending on their size, plus my tether tools cable, a MacBook Pro 16 inch. You don't need to use the little one. You could also fit your light meter and transmitters and notepads and, and all of that good stuff. And it really just looks great because I love forest green. And of course, I love brown leather as well. So next up is the Ellen Chrome ELC 500 Monolite. And these came out back in February, right before we were forced to hide in our houses and gain weight. The best thing about them is that they offer high-speed sync, TTL, and an LED modeling light. And even though they come in at the mid-range of their lineup, they're the only mono light that they have with these features. And so they've really been a great addition to my kit and I use them most of the time. They are my primary light. Now, along with that also came the Ellen Chrome ELB 500 battery powered lights. And I picked these up because they also have TTL and high speed sync. And as well, they also have these very compact and small sort of billiard ball sized or if you will, baseball sized uh, heads. And all of these, three of these and two of these with four heads can fit very compactly into the kit that I use when I take to lighting workshops. And what I can announce today, and I'm really happy and excited that I get to announce this, is that I have three workshops planned for 2021. Back in 2018 and 2019, I got to travel all over the place and meet photographers and help them out with their craft. And it was just so much fun to be able to connect with people. And of course, all of this year, I've been forced to stay here in my studio. But the great thing about 2021 is I'll be able to teach again. And so if you're interested in learning about those workshops and meeting me in person, please go to johngress.com workshops and I'll put a link to it in the description as well. The other great thing about the ELB 500 is because they are so small, they've become my go-to light to take on location, whether that's indoors or outdoors. Of course, they're battery powered, but I'm able to fit two of them and three heads and three adapters that allow you to take these small heads and put them into a regular softbox and put all of that into a really small lighting case that's practically the size of a briefcase. And then I'm able to put some stands and some modifiers into a long uh, sling bag and just sort of put that over my shoulder and grab my camera bag and I'm good to go to do a lot of the business headshots or portraits that I do on location. So I really love these lights because of their compactness. The next thing is something that I just got last week, and that is the Canon RF 85mm f1.2. And if you didn't notice, this lens is gigantic. I tried using their RF 85mm f2 macro, but I found in lighting tests that it just wasn't as sharp and wasn't really gonna do the job that I needed it to do. And this lens is fantastic, whether you're shooting wide open, there's hardly any chromatic aberration. Actually, there is absolutely no chromatic aberration at every f-stop. And in addition to that, it's really sharp whether you're shooting a close-up headshot or a full body portrait, and I can't recommend it enough. Last year, I upgraded from the EF 85mm f1.2 version 2 to the Sigma Art 85mm 1.4 lens, and I thought that lens was great until I compared it to this RF 85mm 1.2, and it absolutely blows the Sigma lens out of the water. So the elephant in the room, which has been sitting right here in front of us, is my new camera. And that is the Canon EOS R5. And it really took me a while to adopt using mirrorless cameras. And I've used this camera since the end of July. And you've probably seen some of my videos about it. And I absolutely love this camera. In fact, I love it so much that I bought a second one. And thankfully today I have them both. In fact, I am talking to you right now through my other R5. This camera is great for video, it's great for stills, and I've always had two matching cameras, and that's because if one of them goes down during a shoot, 
I don't want to interrupt the continuity and start delivering to my clients images that are 20 megapixels and images that are 45 megapixels. I want them all to look exactly the same. The other thing is sometimes I use two cameras like when I'm shooting an event and it's very hard on you mentally to switch back, at least for me, it's very hard to switch between two different models of cameras. And so I'm really grateful that I have two of them. What I love most about this camera is the autofocus system. The face and eye detection is fantastic and I no longer have to worry about focusing and recomposing like I did with a DSLR. I just point the camera and worry about the composition and the camera tracks faces and eyes and gets everything sharp. With the 5D Mark IV, maybe 80 to 85% of my shots were in focus. Well, with this camera, normally almost every image is in focus. There might only be five or six from an entire shoot that is soft, so I absolutely love it. I also wanted to take this opportunity to thank you guys for all of your support this year. I really have appreciated all of the people who have supported this channel by subscribing, and it would be great if you guys could give me a thumbs up and sign up for the bell and all of that good stuff. I also wanted to take this opportunity to wish you guys a happy holiday season and a happy new year. I know that 2020 has been rough for almost all of us, and I'm sure you, like me, are really looking forward to 2021. Like I mentioned earlier, I'm gonna start teaching workshops again, and I really loved meeting and connecting with everybody back in 2019, and I'm really looking forward to meeting more of you guys in 2021. So if you want more information on that, just go to johngress.com workshops, and there are three workshops listed there now, but I'm gonna be adding some more probably. Um, and you could sign up for my mailing list as well. Thank you so much for your time. Stay safe and I'll talk to you soon.